Hello doll fans and welcome back to Beauty Inside a Box. Today I'm going to be talking about Disney dolls, but unfortunately I'm not going to be talking about Disney dolls I like. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about what I would consider to be one of the biggest flop Disney collector doll lines ever. This past year, Disney has kind of been celebrating the ultimate princess celebration. It's kind of a marketing thing, I believe. And basically, as part of the celebration, they brought out a series of dolls. One every month for 15 months, they brought out new Disney designer collector dolls as part of this line called the Disney designer ultimate princess celebration doll line. What a name. <laughs> what a ridiculous name. In my opinion, you may have different opinions to me. If you do, please let me know. I'd love to hear about your opinions on these dolls in the comments. But in my opinion, I don't like these dolls. I don't like these dolls. I was really hoping that somewhere down the line, there would be one that I liked enough to buy. They're really expensive. Let me just say that first of all. I think in the UK, they're about £120 really, really expensive for one doll. And I just, clearly a lot of thought has been put into them. I think maybe too many creative liberties were taken and I just don't like these dolls. I think one of the problems I often have with the Disney Store limited edition dolls is they need to justify this ridiculously high price. So they kind of over embellish the dolls. The dolls just look a bit like ridiculous, you know? There's all these like accoutrements and frills and gold pieces and it, it's just a bit too much. I much prefer the holiday collector dolls that they bring out. They're about £40, much more reasonable price. And they're not too over embellished. They're just nice, affordable, elegant dolls. I really like those dolls and I think Disney should make more dolls in that price range. Um, as opposed to these like £120 dolls, which just look kind of stupid. And this line of dolls had a whole bunch of different Disney designers working on each doll individually, which I already think is a bit of a red flag. You know, if there is a different designer working on each individual doll, then obviously they're not going to look very cohesive altogether and all the different designers have definitely pulled from different references, they've been inspired by different places, and so the cohesion between the dolls is not there. They, they don't look good together whatsoever, in my opinion. On the back of each of the doll boxes, there is a blurb about the designer, which I actually think is a really nice touch, and each blurb does go into detail about the designer's background in designing and also um, some of their influences and their upbringing, which is nice and does put the doll into context. But if you don't read that blurb, the dolls are just a bit confusing. <laughs> and I think the biggest issue I have with these dolls is they don't seem to be inspired by the characters and the time periods they come from and the art style of the film and their characteristics and their goals very much at all. Like, they seem so divorced from the films that these, that these heroines come from that it just, just makes me not want to buy them. I'm like, this could be anyone, you know? It doesn't look like Belle, it doesn't seem like Belle, it doesn't look like Ariel. And that was, I think, the biggest issue I have with these dolls. They don't look like the characters I know and love. And I don't want to gatekeep the characters, again, like, Maybe for another collector, they'll look at these dolls and think, ah, yes, that is Ariel, I totally see Ariel there. But for me, I don't see Ariel. I, I'm just using Ariel as an example, but for any of these characters, I don't see them reflected in these dolls very well whatsoever. Also, I'm not, like, a purist when it comes to what these characters wear. Like, like I said, I love the holiday line. And in the Disney holiday line, the dolls wear outfits that the characters have never worn but I still like them because they seem like outfits that the characters would wear and they seem inspired by the characters and their original outfits and it all makes sense. Whereas I feel like this, these outfits don't make sense for the characters. And also some of them just look a little bit goofy and over the top and it's definitely a case of less is more. For quite a few of these dolls, I'm like, oh, if, if you just took off that, or if you just took off that bow, or if you just took off that ribbon, then maybe this would be a nice outfit, but it's just too much, and it looks a bit silly, and 
yeah, I do not like this line. And I don't think the fans like this line either, because they are still very much in stock in most of the Disney stores I've checked. I went to Disneyland Paris the other week and they still had loads of these dolls. If you go on the Disney store website, they've been massively discounted. So I feel like long gone are the days when these dolls would sell out within like an hour. Now they're still clogging up the shelves months later. Um, and I think it's just because they aren't very well designed. I do not like the designs, personally. I really hope that this doesn't mean that Disney won't attempt to make another collector's doll line. Obviously I want there to be more collector's doll lines, I just want them to do better. <laughs> I, I want them to look nicer, basically. I think another thing that is such a shame about this line is when it was announced that we were going to get designer dolls for 15 princesses, collectors, and myself included, were so excited. Loads of princesses were going to get collector dolls that don't normally get collector dolls, so it was very exciting and ultimately ended up being disappointing. I hope this doesn't usher in the end of Disney collector dolls. They've made 15 dolls, and I don't think any of them have been, like, massively successful. But anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through every single doll and I'm going to rank them worst to best. It's a mixed bag, really, this line. Uh, they're not all terrible, and it's normally just specific elements that I don't like, but anyway. Let's talk about my ranking for the Disney Ultimate Princess Collector doll line. Okay, so number 15 at the very bottom of my list, this doll is in my opinion the worst doll in this collection, is this Aurora doll. Yes, this is meant to be Aurora, you probably couldn't tell. She's in what looks like a very elaborate bathrobe. The dress underneath is fine. They've obviously been inspired by flowers, I guess? Which is odd. Again, the visual language of this doll uh, does not align with the film whatsoever. And for that reason, I don't think this even looks like Aurora. Like, this doesn't read as Aurora to me. I don't understand the colours. I really hate the, like, weird ombre effect uh, that keeps repeating throughout the outfit. This whole thing just kind of hurts my eyes. And then she's got this, like, fascinator on the top of her head, which looks kind of dorky to me. This is just such a horrible outfit. I hate this, like, kind of squiggly lines drawn on the robe as well. Okay, next up on my list, we have this Ariel doll. Ariel is one of my favourite princesses, so I think that's why this one hurt so much when I saw her. I was just like, what is going on here? What is going on? She's got like a short skirt covered by a longer tulle skirt, which I just think looks messy, personally. There are little, like, diamantes on the tulle, which I do quite like. Um, there are some, like, sequins hidden on the, on the bodice of the dress and on the skirt, the underskirt. These are elements I quite like. And then this headpiece with wings on it, kind of looking like, it's giving like Greek mythology, um, which I guess Ariel has a very tenuous link to. Weird, weird, strange idea, and her face doesn't look like Ariel here. I feel like because of the makeup and a couple other choices, she looks much more mature as well. Like Ariel's only meant to be 16, but um, here she looks more grown up. The wings, I just have to go back to the wings for a second. What? Why? Why? Couldn't they at least have been like fins or something? So it's like fish inspired? She has this big kind of uh, thing coming out behind her, which I guess is, I think, meant to be like a callback to that moment where she sat in the rock in the film and the water splashes up behind her, but it's quite lacklustre here. Her hair clearly has so much glue in it that these little kind of Shirley Temple curls are just not good. I, I, don't, I don't like, I don't like. It's just, it's just a mess. It's just a mess, a mix of concepts that I don't think gel well together at all. Again, I have to keep saying it, but this is just my opinion. If you feel differently about this doll, great. I'm very glad that people can appreciate her. 
A beautifully made doll, all of these dolls are incredibly well made. It's just a shame that the final product is so, such a hodgepodge. Next up we have Jasmine, and this was actually the first doll we got in this line. So when I saw her I was a bit like, oh, hmm, okay. And when I first saw her I remember I still had hope. I had hope that maybe this line would pick up, but I knew straight off the bat that I wouldn't be buying this doll, which was a shame because I was really hoping to really enjoy the very first doll that came out and want her for my collection. But no, I didn't want this doll for my collection. Uh, again, too much going on. She's got like this big poofy midsection which just swallows her up, I don't really like. The big puffy sleeves, I love a big puffy sleeve, so I do like that. And then this like, kind of armour, feather, gold thing coming across her chest. Why? Why? It looks stupid. Her hair's styled nicely, she looks very pretty. The panelling coming down is quite nice. Uh, it's, it's in a red colour. Uh, Jasmine does wear red in the film for about a minute. I guess it's like referencing that part of the film. But yeah, I do not like this doll. Again, it's just too much. It's a hodgepodge. Okay, next up we have Pocahontas. Now, I love Pocahontas so much. One of my favourite, favourite, favourite Disney films, and I really had high hopes for this doll, and even though this one isn't the worst, um, it just misses the mark just, just enough for me to not want to buy her. The first thing I want to say, we're going to start from the bottom and go up, the first thing I want to say is, why doesn't the fringe go all the way to the bottom? That really annoys me. I wish the fringe was, like, slightly more copious. I wish the fringe covered the skirt a little bit more. There should be like one more row of fringe right at the bottom in my opinion. Also, I really don't like the gold accents, especially the plastic gold collar. Ghastly. Ghastly. And also quite restrictive. I don't imagine Pocahontas wanting to wear something so restrictive. Um, it kind of reminds me of the bit where they kind of dress her up in Pocahontas 2 and she feels all restrained, and I'm like, I don't want to be thinking about that moment with this doll. I like Pocahontas to have free-flowing hair, her hair is such an important part um, of her design, I always thought, in the film, so having it tied like that I just don't like. The weird little cape thing, also very odd, don't get that. I think overall, apart from the, apart from the collar, the shape of this dress I quite like, um, but there's just like one or two maybe three or four elements that I just would have taken off to improve this doll. Overall, a bit of a fail for me. Next up we have Tiana, and I like Tiana's long, free-flowing, natural hair, love that. Uh, there are elements about this outfit I like. I actually quite like this dress. Like, on someone else, on a different doll, on Barbie, I would love this dress. But on Tiana, I'm just like, why? This doesn't look like anything she would wear, or has worn. Maybe I'm missing the point of this doll line entirely, maybe it's meant to be like, imagine Disney princesses in these outfits that they would absolutely never ever wear. But, you know, I, I like, I like a little bit of character continuity for the Disney princesses, you know what I mean? So this doesn't work for me. I love a cape, I love a cape. A lot of this doesn't look very 1920s inspired. I'm not like a fashion historian, so I don't know for certain, but I don't recognise a lot of these elements from the 1920s. Okay, next up we have Belle. This one originally was lower on the list and then I moved her up. I do like the fact that it pays like very, very clear, deliberate tribute to the rose in the film. I think that's very clever. And all the petals coming down on the tool, very nice. I kind of wish the petals were like more spread out on the tool, instead of all gathered at the bottom like that. She's got like a purse that looks like a book. Again, we like it, we like it when they reference the film, you know? Like, in a way that makes sense. And, you know, Belle does wear red in the sequel film. I wish she had her traditional hairstyle with like some of the hair coming down. I feel like for a lot of these dolls, I wish they had their original hairstyles, because that just makes them a bit more identifiable as the character they're meant to be. Okay, next up we have Mulan. Interesting. I do quite like this one. She's in trousers. I do like the fact that they kind of incorporated 
like a dragon design on the trouser leg. She's got a more like stern, severe looking face, which is interesting, you know, often dolls are like happy smiling, but Mulan, you know, she's ready for a fight, and I like the fact that that's reflected in this doll. Um, the big ostentatious sleeves are quite fun. I wish they'd used different colours, colours that reflected outfits that she'd worn in the film. Okay, next up we have Moana. I quite like this one. I don't really get the wings, maybe that's just me not understanding the reference here. Uh, but I do like the fact that they've kind of taken inspiration from her original outfit and turned it into a ball gown. I like that. It's, it, like, this outfit is definitely inspired by Moana and by the film and by the location of the film and the culture and, you know, it, it all comes together quite nicely here, I think. I just wish her hair wasn't done up in a top knot like that. I wish it was free-flowing. She's got her little bag which has her necklace from the film on it. You know, all those little touches I like, like references to the film. I would just take off the wings and have her hair be down. But yeah, also, you know, we haven't had that many designer Moana dolls, so that's quite exciting. Okay, next up we have Rapunzel. I like this dress. It just looks like, you know, your typical fun 90s Barbie dress, really. Um, and I think that's why I like it. It has subtle references to the film, like the flower motif. This one's just very basic, and I think that's why I like it, because there's not a lot to complain about. But also, you know, there's not really anything that's that exciting about it. I love her long hair, although again, it looks like it has loads of crusty, dusty glue in it. I wish they could style the hair without putting so much glue in it. Okay, next up, I think this is quite a unpopular opinion. I don't think everyone feels the same way. But I actually quite like this Snow White doll. I mean, the outfit doesn't look anything like Snow White at all. It doesn't look like something she'd wear. It kind of looks like Snow White if she, like, traded brains with the Evil Queen. Like, this is something the Evil Queen would definitely wear, not Snow White. But it's fun, I love the cape. I love a cape, and this cape is perfect. Not sure if I like the crown, not sure if I like these ruffles here that look like they're gonna smother her, but, you know, this is a nice doll. But yeah, like I've said before, it doesn't look like anything Snow White would wear. This isn't Snow White. Who is this? <laughs> this is an imposter. Okay, next up, we have five more left. We have the most recent release. This is Ariel. I think one of the reasons why I put this one so high was because it's just so much better than the other one. Like, so much better. Like, her face looks a lot more like Ariel. They haven't put too much glue in her hair. I quite like the fact they gave her a little ponytail because she wears a ponytail in the film at one point. The dress is obviously inspired by water, which makes a lot of sense. I like this one. Not sure if I love this massive flower in her hair. I mean, Ariel does wear a flower in her hair in the film, but I'm not sure if I like that one specifically. This dress looks a little bit out of date, I would say maybe. Okay, next up, at number four, we have this Aurora doll. She's got like an ombre effect on her dress going pink to blue. Love that, because obviously it kind of is reminiscent of her dress in the film changing colour constantly. And I've always thought like, Disney should make more dolls which incorporate like a colour change element for Aurora's dress, because that's such a fun, iconic part of the film. And she even has like a kind of stained glass window design on the back of this panel coming out over the top of her dress which kind of looks like a stained glass window, it's like of the spinning wheel. I like that. I think my biggest problem with this doll is this weird gold thing on her chest. Why is that there? Get rid, get rid, and then I might quite like this doll. Would I pay £120 for her? No. <laughs> no, not on your life. Okay, next up at number three, we have this Merida doll. Now, Merida is not one of the most popular Disney princesses by a long shot, but I think this one is probably the most authentic, like, accurate uh, depiction of Merida I've seen. Like, they've obviously used the tartan, which obviously reminds you of, like, a Scottish kilt or something. You know, that's great. She's got the fluff on here, which kind of reminds you of the bear. There's lots of kind of armour stuff. 
that looks like, you know, it would be useful for using a bow. This one just uses a lot of motif and clear inspiration from Brave, the film. So that's why I like it, like, well done. You've taken the character and you've created this high fashion, like, ball gown for her. And I think this works very well, so yeah. Okay, at number two, I put this Cinderella doll. Even though it's kind of like a modern reimagining of Cinderella's dress, it is still, like, very reminiscent of the style of that dress. You know, it uses the exact same colour. She's got the clock striking mid midnight on her bag. We love that. I wish her hairstyle was slightly more reminiscent of the classic style. I wish her bun was higher. But how they've designed her hair here is also very nice. Her makeup reminds me of the 50s, which is when the film came out. It, you know, it kind of looks like Marilyn Monroe or something. It's very elegant. She even has glass slippers. I mean, what more could you ask for? And then, at number one, I have to put this Tiana doll. Because, beautiful. Stunning, stunning doll. Um, she doesn't wear an outfit that looks like this in the film, but this is very clearly inspired by the 1920s and her hair is done up in a very 1920s design. I love the fact that they've added loads of stars on the outfit, because obviously there's a lot of talk of the evening star in that film, so the use of stars is very clever, I think. It's just a very effective, beautiful, beautiful doll. Really nicely made. Clearly paying tribute to themes and location and time period from the film. Love it. Beautiful, beautiful doll. So there we have it, doll fans. I ranked all the Disney Ultimate Princess Celebration Designer Collection dolls. And I spoke a little bit about why I thought this line wasn't incredibly effective or successful for me. But if you have different opinions, again, please, I encourage you to let me know in the comments. If your ranking is different from mine, let me know in the comments. Also, please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, check me out on Instagram and TikTok, and watch some more of my videos. And I will see you real soon, doll fans. Bye!